of getting it wrong, right? So. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious if you could make suggestions for us so we can become more open to the possibility of actually seeing you and your friends in, in person, in physical, in the future. Well, there are many ways that you could see us in future. Many of us, many of you see us in your sleep state already. We, we know each other and we do sit down for tea sometimes, although not real tea. <laughs> um, but we sit down and speak with you at times in your sleep state. So this is one way that some of you already employ, but others of you could begin to desire more actively. To, to come to meet us in your sleep state and and then we can engineer any number of plans for your awake state to help you in your growth but the second way you might begin to see us is if you develop your spiritual senses if you like your mediumistic senses and you begin to sense spirits around you now the major impediment to you being able to do that and by this we mean you begin to see people who don't have a physical body but have this, a spiritual body, but you can begin to see them when they're around you on earth. The major impediment that every one of you has to this is fear. Fear of dark spirits, but also fear of us lighter spirits. Some of you fear going crazy, or feeling that you will be going crazy. And some of you fear... You simply fear um, being overwhelmed by people, if you like. Many of you at a young age were far more sensitive to the spirits that were around, but felt very overwhelmed and um, that there was no space for you, and so you shut down many of these spiritual senses. So that is another emotion that you would need to work on if you were to see us and perceive us more strongly. And... Then, of course, there are those who are just simply afraid of attack and f afraid of the dark, the dark um, spirits that are around. And many of you have been very aware of them. And many of you are still very aware of them, but you, you spend a lot of your time distracting yourself from that awareness. And then there is the also very obvious issue which Jesus has already covered with you, which is your own desire to be confronted emotionally, in, even in a positive sense, to, to be confronted by someone in front of you loving you very, in a very pure way or giving you a very direct truth that um, might feel a little like the surgeon's knife that we referred to in, in the book that Jesus read to you earlier in the week. So these issues are all issues which affect your ability to perceive us and to see us even when we are in our spirit form. But we think that our, our brother Scott is really referring to seeing us in a physical body. And this is a dream that many of us have and that is to be able to to have our own return to earth, although it's not really a return in the, in the way that you, this brother and sister in front of you are here. But um, to be able to manifest a physical body again on the earth simply for the purpose of delivering truth about the spirit world and the truth of God. Many of us have had the opportunity to manifest a physical body briefly to assist a person um, with a personal issue uh, at a certain crucial moment in their life. But to be able to come simply for the purpose of saying, we exist and we live in a sphere that is not like here, that is um, a place where God's laws are very evident in everything everything that we do in every decision that we make and we honor God's laws and God's dominion if you like over these spheres as a way of love and worship of God as a way of of living to be able to come to the earth and share those truths with people is something that we deeply desire and we hope that at some time in the future when more than just a couple of people have faith in those things. It is only then that we will be able to manifest physically. 
this issue of faith and faith in God's love and God's laws and God's power and yes, even God's dominion over the sphere that you live in. When enough people have faith in this, then we will be able to manifest ourselves physically and to be able to speak openly and freely about where we have come from and what we desire for the earth. Just as we are attempting to do in a somewhat very limited way through the medium in front of you. Rachel, I was wondering whether you could explain a bit about the law involved as to why that's not possible now. There are many restrictions placed upon us, um, all pertaining to the issues of love. And as many of you may or may not be aware, God's understanding of love and the, um, the way in which love should be, um, the, the way in which his laws uphold the possibilities for love and limit the possibilities for the growth of error are very precise. And it is these kinds of laws that govern everything. But there are very particular laws governing our ability to come to earth when the um, conditions are not right in terms of if the conditions are such that error will only be spread by us manifesting, then the laws immediately restrict that because each of God's laws, whether you are aware of this or not, are all there to limit the growth of error and to stimulate or encourage the growth of love. And it is this very particular issue that... Um, this is what upholds all of God's laws, but this is really what we would wish to say about our ability to come here. Unless there are conditions that are conducive to the growth of love and faith, then we are limited to, be, to being here in such a tangible sense because the opposite would be true. We, our presence here would actually lead to, um, to more error and more misunderstanding. And God's laws are not designed to support such actions. So the question then becomes, why is it that there are certain spirits who are on the natural love path that seem to be able to do, or, or seem to want to do those things? Well, there are two reasons for this. And one is that they, they do not honour God's laws as we do. And they also are... Um, need a moment to overcome the intellectual resistance. These spirits do not honour the law in the way that we do, but also their power is not as great as ours is in this physical plane. If and while it may seem to, that may seem to be a contradictory um, statement in that they seem to manifest quite a bit of power in the, in the way that they appear, they do not, this is, this is the, um, the, the uh, great difference in the power of what we would manifest in coming to the physical, physical plane as we exist now in the celestial heavens. The, our presence is far stronger, far more, uh, it has far more of an impact than those in lower spheres are able to do. So, those, so it's probably right to say that those in the lower spheres, when they come here, they don't appear to be much different than the average human, whereas if you came here, you would appear to be like either an angel or, a, or some kind of strange... A bright being from outer space that somebody would misinterpret. Yes, and uh, we also are trying to convey that it is not just the, the physical presence that mm -hmm. has an impact, but the spiritual presence. The, because of the level of love from God which we have received, um, our, our physical manifest, manifestation is imbued or it... it um, so much love comes out of it that this is in very, very stark contrast to the way, the, the conditions upon the earth at this time. Mm -hmm. And the effects of such a presence are, well, quite profound. Mm 
Well, it would create a lot of fear and terror. Trigger mm. much mm. error within the the environment. Mm. Um, or, uh, as as you are aware, brother, each step that you take towards God and the more of God's love that you receive, the more error is confronted in your environment. Mm. So if we were to multiply our brother's very, um, very good condition in love now... Very limited condition. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have the perspective of seeing it in comparison with the others in the room, and there, there is some... Quite marked difference, but um, <laughs> but we understand. But understand as well that each each sphere that we move through, each each um, progression towards God, is not a simple um, uh, linear progression. It is exponential, and so each sphere that we enter, the love, especially beyond the eight sphere, the love that is within us is exponentially greater. And so for us now, Timothy and I reside in between the ninth and 10th sphere to come here at this time. It is a huge presence of love. And, and also the two of us <laughs> appearing in such a, um, uh, an instantaneous way would cause ripple effects. In fact, if we were to do it here in this room, the ripple effects of us manifesting at this time would be felt globally in terms of the error that would be um, triggered by the presence of that love. And so we are restricted. Of course, those same ripple effects will happen once one of the 14 becomes at one with God. Um, but the difference is that we've lived among people on earth and, uh, and therefore have the ability to teach. There are also laws based around what you can share. So a spirit from the higher spheres can materialise a body and help someone individually, but they, they are restricted from sharing God's truth in that position, if that makes sense. And this is, this is that which we were referring to earlier. This limitation is only um, lifted when enough people on earth have faith. So faith has the um, effect of opening the heart to, towards God and towards new truth. And so when enough people on the planet have a, a certain level of faith, this would enable us to come and share more of God's truths because the overall... In, um, environment would be one that is more open to receiving these truths and not entering states of fear or um, hatred in response to what we, we present. So basically, the 14 came to sort of bash the path down <laughs> and then hopefully by the time that's been done, there'll be quite a lot of people who are open and having enough faith but also open to truth so that whenever our celestial friends do appear on earth, that uh, there is not a large amount of violent opposition to their appearance. There is much beauty in everything that God designs, and even indeed this process that our very humble brothers and sisters of the 14 have undertaken, um, there, is, there is definite um, there is a definite design inherent in the process that, the process that they are going through. Each of them at times feel very frustrated about their, um, their, the speed of their progress and what, it, what they have seemingly lost and what it seems that they must overcome in order to regain what their condition and their relationship with God. And yet this is... This is while very painful and um, requiring a great deal of will and desire on their part, this, this process is actually designed to make things easier for each of you in that it is a gradual change that you are able to observe and it is being well documented as well. But it is a gradual change that you are able to observe and the confrontation becomes increasingly, 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 increasingly more um, severe in terms of the contrast between error and truth 
between fear and love. But you have this opportunity to open gradually as they change gradually. And this is wonderful because if you choose this, at the time when they reach at one moment with God, you will be in a state where you are able to be almost that intermediary for others where the contrast between fear and love and error and truth is not so profound as to devastate a person. So even though our, our, well, our brothers here in the room who are often feeling uh, at times, why did we do this? <laughs> um, they, what they are engaged in requires such a deep level of humility in order to continue and um, to grow in this way. But God has designed it in such a way that it is actually very um, loving towards those others on earth. Now, rather than you ask another personal question, perhaps why don't we ask Rachel and Tim a personal question? Does that sound? Because quite often we we're a bit selfish when we engage our spirit friends, and we're not. We want to know a bit more about them. So, um, are there things you'd like to share, Tim and Rachel, or shall I ask the questions? 